you what's going on y'all it's j Smo reviews here back at it again with another video man early the next day with it it's like 5 45 in the morning here trying to get this out before football uh and that is my battle academy war ready the people vs politics recap we shouldn't be too long-winded with this one it was a card that was really based around two battles with rock and reed and jc versus bill collector which even though both ended up with clear results i still feel like they were entertaining battles even though they were pretty one-sided you still get kind of showcase performance performances and then an undercard that had a couple you know a couple standout performances here and there overall when I ranked the card um and also with the fact that it had a three hour delay classic battle academy and then this long run time into the night but overall probably like a six out of ten card you know what I'm saying I wouldn't say it was it was good or great I also wouldn't say that there was like huge flaws or it's events that you really have to like pick apart just solid, okay week in a battle rap. And without further ado, let's start from the bottom of the card. So opening battle was Fist to Beast versus Dot. And I did not catch this in, the, in its entirety, but unfortunately, I caught the second half of it. Um, and I believe Fist did win this one. Listen, with Dot, has he been entertaining? Like, just purely as an entertainer? Yes. Has Dot ever been really a good battle rapper? No. You know what I mean? His, his lack of rhyming, uh, any type of tailoredness just just really any type of sense at times has always been part of it that's actually part of the fun this man did say um Beretta. and it's so funny because i don't know when dot's name was popping for the bad news fight and all this silly stuff i saw people like yo you gotta watch out for dot too he's been he's, he's been on point this year what the fuck do you mean he's been on point this year you know what i'm saying dot is dot so that was the opening battle from there it was capo bravado versus bandit montana uh this was capo 3-0 and it's kind of funny i feel like you know, Capos battled the Vets, the T-Tops, the Shugs, the Arsenals. Even though you could debate he's won all of them, a lot of the performances end up being, eh, they come and go. He's pretty decent versus Shug. Granted, Shug's been donating wins all year. Um, but then when he's battled Appa and now Bandit this year, I feel like that's actually when some of his better performances have come out. Him and Appa was like, I had him winning, but it was like a competitive, kind of a high-quality battle. Uh, and he's just better than Bandit. I never understood how Bandit got that URL contract, who like that, how that decision was made. When it's a new talent pool, you're pulling a guy from grind time that really had no other flashes you know what i'm saying i didn't see this battle playing out much uh really any other way but i will say bandit getting annoyed with the crowd and just calling time because the crowd isn't cheering for him that can re that really just tells you what this matchup is and kind of what he is as a battler but thought capo was good pretty consistent across all three um you know light 30 handled his business and then from there you have jay breed versus funeral fame that was eh. you know like it's a battle like that like no disrespect but why like we just don't need that battle on the card they're not like battle academy based artists it's not adding extra name value to the card but it was okay i did have jay breed winning funeral fame's material was just all over the place uh and then you get into the matchups that weren't of those top two but it was the vets versus battle academy artist and that's where you get shotgun shug versus shank prezi which i can't lie a little bit of a gem i actually thought it was a decent battle uh shug i expected shug to bring nothing to this battle it wasn't exactly like that he had some stumbles here and there particularly in the first two rounds um but nothing like hard stumble or choke or anything like that his rounds were pretty much on the short side which you know, I wasn't expecting 330s, obviously, either. I think that's even less likely, but he had some pretty decent, efficient two-minute rounds, and I actually had him winning the first round. I thought Shank didn't match, like, his peaks, uh, but then from there, I thought that Prezi actually had, like, a pretty good round himself. It, I'll help you with that diet. This is a carbon fiber. I love that bar, and also, he kind of wraps a little bit longer, not egregiously, like the last time Shug was on here versus Top Floor Loot. I felt like Top Floor just wrapped like three times as long as him, and that's pretty much what the battle is. It's not anything based on quality. I actually thought Suge was decent. I actually thought Prezi like genuinely won the second and the third with some good lines. I think out of all of the Battle Academy rostered people, I actually got a little bit of belief in Shank Prezi, and I've been critical of the roster, but he, he says some decent shit. You know, I can't lie, and I feel like he's kind of getting there a little bit more performance delivery wise not just standing in one spot so actually one of the better battles from the undercard and i did have prezi winning the second and the third um t-top versus top floor loot i'd probably say a little bit worse than what shogun prezi was um you know top does uh does choke in this battle so that doesn't help in the second round i did have him winning the first round of the battle i thought it took a uh, t-top winning the first because they're both called top so it's kind of hard to decipher but i had t-top edging the first round of the battle i thought top floor loot was okay but i thought he had a very slow start it took a minute before he started landing i think t-top would have won the second two but he choked like he choked mad early 
but then he did get it back, you know what I'm saying, For like, and complete his rounds. So the quality of the material was good, but he made it as long as top four loot was clean. He was going to win that round. He did. I would also say the second is technically top four loot's best round. I don't think he was really too crazy in this battle. Um, and then it comes down to the third, which since T-Top has his stumbles and top four loot, I don't know if he's stumbling, but he's disorganized and laughing with mad pauses in his round. It makes the battle debatable off, like, this shitty third round. It's really just, eh. Like, the battle is just, eh. It's not the worst thing ever, but it's, eh. Um, I edged T-Top the third, though. I thought both were unclean, but I, I did prefer some of T-Top's material a little bit. But overall, I mean, it's kind of, you see the battle on paper, might have expected somewhat what, like what you think it would turn out as. Um, so I had T-Top 2-1 edge, but fairly close battle. And then you had O-Red versus K-Walker, which is battle of the night. It was the best battle on the card. And I did say I was a little worried about how serious O-Red would take it, while K-Walker is, you know, he has pride when he battles in Philly, right? Especially versus a vet. However, this is actually a great O-Red. This was classic, small room. Why is O-Red rapping this good right now, O-Red? Um, and in the first round, it looked like it was going to be dominant. I mean, he smoked K-Walker in the first. Nothing close about that round. And I'm like, I didn't see things playing out this way, but you know what? You got to adapt to what's in front of you. This is probably going to be a whooping, but I got to give it to K-Walker. His second and his third, he really fought. What do you have in the second? My youngin got 50 years. Um, His parole officer ain't even born yet. That bar was crazy. He had a couple other like bombs like that in the second and the third. I do think Red still kind of showed those levels, just pen-wise at a different level. The actual structure of the round, the setups to the actual punch like there was just a few things quality wise i felt like he was reaching higher i personally had red with the gentleman's with the edge in the second and third but i see some people saying walker might have got the second and third to them so it goes to show he fought even after going down a dominant 1-0 and he made something in this battle so battle of the night i'm sure some people could give walker around um but for me personally i did think red like i said showed those levels and probably had the performance not the performance of the night as well but one of the better performances of the night and then that leaves you with jc and bill and uh, Tay Rock versus Reed. And with JC and Bill, I expected this to be battle of the night. I believe that was my prediction going into this. Obviously, I thought it was actually, even for how delayed it was, I feel like they should have battled back near when they won their tournaments, when Bill won the 100K on King of the Dot, JC won the 120 on URL. But even now, I felt like they were kind of both battling up. Like JC is been better this year he's been every battle you see him getting better and better and back to jc form and bill had already started the year good so i wasn't mad at this matchup now um but it ended up being lopsided right so the first round of the battle i will say is lackluster on both sides i don't think this battle started very good and started on jc who just took a straight bar for bar approach like it was nothing different than the usual jc and it wasn't egregiously bad i just thought it was on the lighter side like i thought that this wasn't some of his more powerful material the battle i felt like he didn't hit really any of the peaks like he does later in the second and the third round of this battle just a basic kind of like jab jab and then I thought the door was wide open for Bill Collector, especially when he's had like powerful first versus chest. He snatched that first from Rock when they battled. And Bill's first is all over the place. You know what I'm saying? It, it also has its own flaws, but I think it's even a little bit more disorganized at times in the beginning. And he does this all battle where he's kind of talking about other battle rappers. Charlie Clips lives in an apartment. He's broke. Pray for Mook. He's broke. He talked called Hollow uh, homeless. Like, he was doing a little bit of that, like, about random legends like that, all battle, uh, which I maybe could kind of be, like, setting up for a call-out, I guess. You know what I'm saying? He has went back and forth with a few of these guys, but the way he was doing it wasn't, like, it was kind of comedic because <laughs> it was so random, but it wasn't, like, adding to the attack of his round. I just felt like when it came to addressing JC in that first, he was just a bit all over the place. I even thought he stumbled a couple times, which rare for Bill, you know what I'm saying? But I realized that he really was having a little bit of memory issues, so not a great first from either it was really worrisome start to the battle i did edge jc the first round but like i said nobody went out there and snatched it so then you get to the second round of the battle jc is much better in the second round of this battle it's much more like what you saw versus eunice versus bad news reaching a bit of a higher peak bar for bar he's also getting into his i know every word which i'm not the biggest fan of delivery wise but when he is cooking it does it does the ad libbing doesn't exactly hurt it right it just adds that momentum when, when it is quite as good as you're saying so i thought jc had a strong second and then bill goes in the second my apologies i'm a little tired i got the bar for bar in front of me but it's not you don't need that to call this second round because bill 
starts to heat up. He's getting into his chain punching, you know, where it's like all the little punches adding up. It's more about the rapping ability. And then he chokes, which I just didn't see coming. I guess he was really acting. Looking back in the during commentary, he would go over there and like snatch the mic to kind of promo. He's kind of talking about anything. He's talking about like he went from, you know, calling other battle rappers broke and say, it doesn't matter if I choke three rounds tonight. I still own my own car, this and that. And then he was talking about how um, McDonald's is trying to kill the people, you know what I'm saying, with the chicken sandwich. It's just all over the place. And that energy kind of transferred into this battle. And it sucks because Bill's second is good. He does get... He does get it back from the choke, and he like he has a formidable second round, but I won't forget, you know, he landed a haymaker, he said, it's that time, it's that time, and then choked, and it was kind of just like, well, wow, that, that happened quickly. So even though Bill was, was respectable in the round, JC still ended up taking that, and then the third, to me, um, is another debatable round. Bill was clean, JC was clean. Uh, just another, like, bar-for-bar-based round also felt like JC angled a little bit. He was comparing their tournament wins in a sense, right? And Bill joked, like, you were supposed to split swamp some of that bread, right? That was his angle. He's like, you didn't even give me none of it. So a little bit of funny stuff. You know, you get that more all-around Bill. And the third, since it's his cleanest round and a good round, probably ends up being his best round of the battle just because it doesn't have, like, the lack of quality like the first. And it doesn't have the choke like the second round, even though material-wise that was better. But I had JC personally edging this round too. You could definitely give it to Bill. Um, But it was just, I thought that JC just had a little bit more of a round, was cleaner, just was a bit sharper, and he rode uphill. So I I had this Bill 2-1 going in. He's been great on Battle Academy's last few outings, and I thought that he would further that here, especially with the way he started in the first half of the year. But this will be Bill's first clear loss of 2024, and a big one for JC, you know what I'm saying? You get the Bad News Battle, the Eunice Battle, and now a clear Bill Collector win with him hinting that he is a big plate um coming up on the horizon before the year's out so very good you know late upward trajectory for jc and definitely a, one of the stranger performances from billy's got ill will coming up so maybe he'll be more better applied for that maybe it was something about life going on around this matchup i don't know but this was not about jc like just he was good in this battle but it's not about him like crazy out rapping bill or being like twice the battler he was better approaches this was really more about bill being a little bit like confusing at times and a bit unclean i feel like ultimately that's what cost him the battle and then you have your main event with rock versus reed which will be really easier to recap because it is a death it is a murder i mean rock won very convincingly all three rounds and really in ugly fashion i had said beforehand like i could see a world where reed is good like really good in this battle could even pull off the upset i personally had rock winning the battle but i think reed in philly with the right opponent thought he was really good versus easy and even though he'll have he lost that and he has losses across his career probably more than he has wins at this point you do have moments like him versus nitty or him versus ill will where when he really respects his opponent he does show up with that like elite version of himself and i thought if Tay Rock is another opponent like that that could bring it out of him. And I thought his first two rounds were good. His second's even better than his first. But there's just such a difference here um, in quality of material. I just felt like Rock was rapping, performing better, more aggressive, bar for bar, a little bit more sound. And then on top of that, he's doubling him in rap time. I mean, Rock rapped forever in this battle. As he's done in a few battles this year, I feel like him and Av at times kind of rely on winning more with time than they do with quality this year. This time, and I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of that. However, they also don't really lack quality a lot of the time. And this is one of those where it, he's most certainly just winning in both. He's, he would he would have won with a three minute round and then he overkilled and over won with a very good seven minute round. So that's the only difference in this one. Um, first round, I thought Reed was okay. Uh, really not that crazy. I didn't think he was bad either, but more on the wrapping pockets basis, right? It wasn't, it just wasn't that powerful of a round, and Rock just swarms it with pretty much nothing but Reed flips. There was a couple, I saw Reed was getting upset, like, so that's something you can't read, like Mayweather, like a couple of those, but then he also had to beat me, you're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get a dollars we've never seen, like Harriet Tubman, like when they were gonna put her on the 20, I thought that was crazy, um, I'm trying to remember, wasn't it, this is so random, but there was a, a Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet bar earlier in the night from O-Red, I love that bar, I thought Rock said it for a second, I don't know why I brought it up, I just like the bar, uh, but he was just bombing on Reed, he's also, you know, if we're talking about pockets, 
that's now one of Rock's, if not his biggest strength. So he's matching Reed in that as well when that's Reed's biggest strength. So he's doing everything he has to do. He murders the first round. Reed goes in the second. I like the, uh, he had a rock and roll scheme, but particularly he was like, you know, Rock's always trying to fake fight. Let's see him rage against the machine. He did a whole Rolling Stones and this like, you know, the classic, you know, rock and roll scheme after, but I thought the rage against the machine bar was really dope. A um, little bit of real talk in there too. It's definitely his best round. But I feel like Rock, once again, just complete, like, it's just a different level of battle rapper. And it's almost like Reed was the one on the road. That's how much love Rock was getting in that room. He's outperforming him. He's out, he's just out rapping him in terms of like a syllable structure basis. The actual quality of the bars, it's just a different level. So even though Reed threw his best punch, it was a clear 2 0. I think it's the third round of this battle. And Reed just kind of folds on himself, um, ends up choking it, really like choking two or three times trying to get through it, cuts the round short. Uh, and Rock just wraps his way to victory. His third is, is like almost his lightest in the sense that he just brings the aggression down a little bit. He's still bar for bar having a pretty good round. You I mean, it's really up there with his first and second. Um, just a difference, just straight up a difference in material, difference in battle rapper at the moment. So this one turned out how many people thought it could have turned out. It was Tay Rock 3-0 body bag over Reed. And I will say in a year where Rock has a lot of wins, a lot of debatables too, just a, a large body of work over 10 plus battles. I think this one, especially out of the three rounders, is the ugliest and most dominant. And this is the biggest body that Tay Rock has caught in 2024. And while it's not like a crazy, crazy, you know, it doesn't fully change the trajectory of his 2024, pretty much everyone had him beating Reed. It still is a great performance to add to his resume for the year. And that's pretty much it. That's it for Battle Academy. So like I said, you're not hearing me like, not the couple jokes I made about guys in like the very beginning of the card and their performances, but really not a bad card. A couple chokes here and there also, but also that wasn't overly abundant. JC ends up really clearing Bill Collector. Rock ends up body bagging Reed. So those two battles, they don't end up being fights, but they end up being key performances, especially if you're a Rock or a JC fan, you're walking away happy. And they give you stuff like Suge versus uh, Prezi and O-Red versus K-Walker, which shows the Battle Academy guys, you know, rising the occasion a bit. And shout out the 3 for Capo. So that is the overall recap here. Want to hear from you guys if you saw the event. How'd you feel about JC and Bill? How do you feel about Rock versus Reed? Um, what do you think these particular results do to the years of Rock JC and Bill because I feel like those are three guys that you would talk about now in that kind of top 20 conversation some of them have been there but especially with this win for JC I think he's kind of stacking up towards that conversation as we hit the end of the year uh yeah and let me know any other takeaways from the undercard but it's been J Small Reviews again here y'all like comment subscribe I'm gonna catch you on the next one man peace